really good, guys. It's your boy, Spider-Man, aka D-Man. Your man, I'm sitting here with my sister, my day one. The one who holds it down for me, my co-host, Daria. Say, what's up, Daria? What's up, Daria? I know you trying to show off all of our good and nice merch, making sure everybody knows what we got up in the store and what we got in store for you. This is our Smash Pay-Per-View Predictions special. This is our pay-per-view preview show for the channel. Oh, and for 2020 New Year. And our first one for the 2020, for the new decade. Let's get it going yeah. this decade. And... As usual, if you'd like to support the channel and continue to see us grow, make sure to subscribe to the channel, drop a like on any of our videos, on any of our content, and make sure to comment down below because we do like to hear from you, our Kaiju faithful. It, it is the road to WrestleMania has just started with this particular weekend. We have Worlds Collide, our NXT bash on Saturday, which is... Don't let everybody know it's technically today because we're kind of late on recording everything, but it's okay. It's okay. We gotta. We gotta keep moving. We've been busting our little busting kaiju furry our, butts. Our butts, yes, indeed. Kaiju furry. I don't don't know why you had to say that. And it's also time for the rumble. And this is your first time tuning in to the Smash Pay Per View Prediction Special. Here's how we handle things. We take a look at the card. We give you a brief rundown of the match of the storylines leading into said match. And then we give you our picks and our insights on who we believe should win, who, uh, how the storyline should go uh, from that point on. And then we keep it moving. At least we're going to try to keep it moving. Yeah, because the matches aren't interesting. We're just going to. Yeah, if the matches aren't interesting, we're just going to bust it through because ain't nobody give a damn. And we got one of those for the first time, I think we only got one match that we don't care about. Good job, W-E. W-W-E. You got you to throw an extra W in there. Yeah. Good job, guys. You guys are. Because if you don't, that's that's the women's entertainment channel. And? What's wrong with that? I say nothing wrong, but I'm just saying that you're no, wrong. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's go. Let's jump into this. We're going to start off with Worlds Collide. Uh, this is going to be our NXT versus NXT UK because uh, prior to this, 205 Live used to get wrapped up into the into a part of the whole Worlds Collide uh, motif, but now that 205 Live has been absorbed by NXT and NXT UK, uh, respectively, it's now just there. It's just there. So we have... Wait, is there still a 205 Live? Yeah, or? of course. Okay. Yeah, because we still got a Cruiserweight Championship. 205 Live still shows up every, uh, every Friday. Oh, oh right. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, after SmackDown. So they're still doing it. They're still, they're still rocking it. It's still cool. But let's get us started with probably one of the most surprising matches out there because we have a reunion. It's a family reunion. Who we introducing? Who we introducing? We introducing Team DIY. They're coming back for probably one night only. We got Johnny Gargano yeah. and Tommaso Ciampa yeah. going up against Mustache Mountain. They Ta grew up. They grew up. They stopped beating the shit out of each other. They will not really thank God because I kind of liked it, but I'm sorry. Proceed. Yeah, proceed. As I was saying, Tyler Bate and Trent Seven, Mustache Mountain. Let me just finish off the names before you interrupted a brother. But anyway, there's really no story to this. Not, not really. It's just, it's just two tag teams that want to beat the crap out of each other. That's, that's really the, the, the crux of this, this whole match. But that, sometimes it's all you need. Let them tell a story in the ring. Let them have an amazing match in the ring and get you involved. And right now, that's these two teams, they're more than capable of doing that. Uh, three. Is it three or two? Just two. It's a tag team match, woman. Okay, why does it look so big? Oh, okay. Because okay. it has the names of parentheses, I know. It, that confused me. That confused me. Okay. Easily confused. You know what? There's, 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 as I said, there's, there's not a lot of story to this. Uh, this is going to be one of the best matches of this whole weekend. Probably could be the show stealer of this night, if, yeah. if not the whole weekend. So let's jump right into it. Who do you got? Team DIY versus Mustache Mountain. I think since Team... Ugh, hello. I think since Team DIY is coming together again, reunited, family reunion... I think they're going to win. So you got Team D. I yeah, got boy. Team. You know, I'm Tomasa Champ all day. I know. You, you you love him and his Goldie. 
I honestly don't know on this one because I was surprised that uh, Kushida and, uh, you know, the Time Splitters lost their match against uh, the Grizzled Young Veterans. So, like, they're willing to go a direction that I'm not expecting in some of these tag team matches. And for this one, I thought I would say, hey, DIY all the way. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I honestly don't know because Tyler Bate and Trent Seven... They're amazing. Oh, yeah, of course. They could easily take this match. So I'm I'm kind of on the fence. But I guess I'd say I'm leaning more towards Team DIY for the feel-good moment of, you know, the night. There's no reason why uh, Ciampa or Gargano will turn on each other. So there's no reason, like, no external reason for why they should lose the match. Yeah. Uh, they're great together. They've, they've grown separately to the point where the sum of their... What what was that saying? Like the sum of their parts are equal to the to their whole or what, whatever Something that's like saying. That. Whatever yeah, that's yeah, saying yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. Um Yeah, I got DIY on this one. Okay. I, I got DIY, but like just barely. Just barely. I think everybody's gonna be like just barely as to who they have, because like you said, there's like two amazing teams that's gonna like beat the shit out of each other and then you know, one team is coming back. No, there's no reason for them to turn on each other. Yeah. But then again, it's WWE. Well, it's so, it's at least NXT. That's that's true. But it's NXT treated like a separate entity a little yes. bit. Yes. Well, you're right. But NXT usually is pretty good at developing a storyline if it's necessary. Yeah. And they do do pretty good at developing that. Do do. Last minute, yeah, they do do. They do <laughs> show that even last minute or during a pay per view event as of tonight. But yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. We got a fatal four way match for the Cruiserweight Championship. We got Angel Garza, who just got the championship, took it away from Leo Rush. Uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott, who are they are finally letting uh, him come out into his own. Jordan Devlin, who is like a friggin' ace. And Travis Banks, the Kiwi Crusher. Again, there's not a whole bunch of story to this because no. this is this is a this is a worlds collide kind of event where it's like if not for this event they pro we probably wouldn't have this kind of a match. Uh, Swerve oh, Swerve got his uh, got his shot in a triple threat match against Leo Rush and uh, Tyler Breeze. First of all, I didn't even know Tyler Breeze was a cruiserweight. I didn't either. That surprised the hell out of me. It, but yeah, then again, it shows you how much I know. Uh, and uh, Jordan Devlin and Travis Banks got theirs on NXT UK. This is again quite likely to be a great match because Angel Garza, I didn't think too much of him uh, when I first saw him, but ever since I've seen him in other matches, he's grown on me in a way that I think that he could handle his own quite well. Uh, I've always been in love with Swerve ever since he was Kill Shot and Shane Strickland and all that stuff. I've loved this guy. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Devlin, like he's probably one of my favorite wrestlers in NXT UK and Travis ba uh, Travis Banks. I've seen him in a few other places. Like this is going to be a high flying, amazing, hard hitting match. Probably going to be one of the best fit of four way matches out there. Yeah. Uh, up there with uh, that Sami Zayn, uh, Tyson Kidd, uh, uh, Neville, and shoot, I can't remember who that fourth one was. I think it was also Tyler Breeze. <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> it might have been. It but like, been. It, but like, it's probably going to be the the best NXT uh, and NXT UK Fatal Four Way match that we've seen. Um, who do you got? Oh, okay. Now this one, yeah, I'm on a fence. You're on the fence. I'm on the fence. I really want Isaiah Swerve to get it, but he's just now coming out on the scene. So, although. With the match between him, Leo Rush, and Tyler Breeze, I was completely floored that they let him win that match. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. I, I mean, I my money was for either Leo Rush or Tyler Breeze. And that's just because I was like, okay, they're not going to let him do it. I mean, this guy's freaking awesome. Just, you know, nope, but they're not going to let him do it. However. How be ever. How be ever. They certainly flipped that on my little furry ass. So, why do you keep bringing up your furry ass? Because I'm furry. I'm, I'm trying to understand. Just go. Is. Thank you. So I don't know. I'm I'm kind of on a fence. I want to say Angel Garcia will retain. Garcia. Oh, Garza. I'm sorry, Garza. Yep, Garza. We're okay. <laughs> sorry, Angel Garza is gonna retain. All right. Um, 
I got Angel Garza. It's not an easy pick for me. But I, I the way that I see this happening is quite easily like, you know, everybody's going to be hard hitting. Everybody's going to hit all their freaking moves. It's going to be one of those uh, matches that, you know, sits in your chest for a little bit. It's going to be a heart attack of a match. But I'm pretty sure that Angel Garza you're likely to see him like sneak in and steal one away because this is going to be his first real title contention. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't see them taking it off of Leo Rush just to give it off to somebody else. I don't think they would hot shot a champion. They, they don't do that a lot in NXT. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got Andrew Garza on this one and it will, and it will be a freaking spectacular. It match. would. And this is also a no DQ match, right? Yeah. Because most Fatal 4 wins are no DQ. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So yeah. I think he's going to do something and it's just going to be like, that's it. Uh, next, we got Finn Balor. Uh, Finn Balor. Jesus Christmas. Finn Balor mm-hmm. versus Ilya Dragunov. And again, this is another one of those Worlds Ooh. Collide matches, which don't yeah. really have much of a story behind it. Um, the one thing I will say that Ilya Dragunov, again, another guy who has grown on me. Um, I think it was Blackpool, uh, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool when he faced off with uh, Cesaro and oh, he, he was yeah. just a guy to me. It was like, I don't know who this guy is. I'm, I'm trying to figure out who he is. He had an amazing match with, with well, Cesaro. Of course. Well, Cesaro also has a way of like, well, yeah. bringing out a good match out of people. Yeah, but he didn't bring a good match out of him. Like, they, like he was hard hitting too. Like, he, I fell in love with him uh, after that match. And Finn Balor pulling off this Prince persona. He's like, he's basically coming back to his own, like, forget all the whole Demon King. It's like, I'm a happy-go-lucky guy. Here's my cheesy smile and my pecs and my abs, and everybody loves me. So you're basically calling him a Tony Nese? What I mean, like, like that's, that's what he, he was when he was a... He's counting his abs? I mean, like, I mean, like, basically, that's what he was when he was a face. But, like, now he's, he's going back to the Prince moniker, and he's, like, taking, you know, prisoners. And this is the kind of match that is perfect for these two, because, like... Ilya is a hard hitter. I did not know how freaking, like, some of those forearms that I've been seeing him drop on people, like, are stiff as hell. And I want to see this match more to see how Finn Balor responds to something like that. Because, like, when was the last time we've seen Finn Balor in a hard hitting match? We've seen him in, like, some technically savvy matches. We've seen him, um, you know, in, in some high flying matches. I think the closest we got to him was the last time he was in, uh, in NXT. I think it was a takeover when he went up against, um, the bro, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle. Thank you. Names. I suck at them. When he went up against Matt Riddle, that was the closest one to one of those, like, you know, snapping hits and like hard hitting, uh, strikes kind of matches. And I want to see, you know, how he responds. Like, will the Prince be able to hold on? Uh, on this one and he's not the underdog I'm not that's not what I'm saying oh yeah no but like you know I want I just want to see like how his character f- continues to grow as the prince now that he's basically dropped uh that baby face sort of uh look to himself so Finn Balor versus Finn, I keep saying Finn Balor Finn Balor see Finn Balor I changed mine when I said mine incorrectly Finn Balor versus Ilya Dragunov who you got Mm. I'm going to stick with Finn. Finn's been kind of wrecking it. And I have to thank the Fiend because the Fiend made Finn snap. Yeah, you know what? I'm with that. I'm with that. Uh, I'm going for Finn on this one. Again, this is going to be probably the most interesting match just to see how everything works out. Oh, it's going to uh, work out with, perfectly, With his character and how everything happens there. Ilya, Ilya can take a loss on this one. He's still, you know, great. Uh, he's still got his own little storyline between uh, him um uh, Gallus and uh, Imperium. Oh, that's NXT right. UK. On NXT UK, so, yeah. So, like, him taking a loss here doesn't really do much against him. Uh, and, you know, I'm not expecting any kind of shenanigans because everybody who could interfere in any of these matches is involved later on in the main event. Let's move closer to that main event. We have a championship match, the second championship match of the night, the NXT Women's Championship, uh, with Tony Storm, the challenger, up against Rhea Ripley, the champion. This is the this is like the fourth time they've had they've gone up against each other. Yeah, I was gonna say now this one, there is a little bit of a storyline. There, there, there is. There's a lot of history here. Yes. But this is the first time they're going up with the NXT Women's Championship, not the NXT UK Women's Championship. No, just the Women's Championship. Just straight up Women's NXT Championship. NXT Championship. And uh, these guys, these guys, these women have amazing chemistry. They have a lot of history together. Yeah. Uh, go take a look at uh, 
what was it? The May Young tournament. Take a, yeah, take a look um, at both May Youngs. Uh, yeah, take a look at the May Young tournament. Take yes. a look at um, a few NXT UKs where they've where they've had matches for the NXT UK Women's Championship. They tore the roof off, in my opinion. These are these women yeah. are great. I I just can't belabor the point anymore. Let's just go right into it. Who do you have on this one? Oh God, this one is gonna be a really tough one. Jesus, like I, <coughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, and this one, I'm actually indecisive because I have no clue. I, I want to say Rhea is going to retain because she just got this title. Yeah. And I don't really see them just like ripping it off of her. Although, hell, they could because it's Tony Storm. And I mean, like, it's not. It's holy not like shit, it's, it's Tony you know, Storm. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like, oh, OK. So, I mean, if they do, it's still going to be like, well, holy shit, it's Tony Storm. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, like Shayna Baszler. But I, I don't see them doing that so you, so you and, and i'm thinking rhea? yeah and then i think it's more that's gonna happen with rhea having this title plus this title looks damn good on her I'm oh it kind of does it really does so you got rhea i guess i'm just have to say i'm sorry tony uh this this match really doesn't matter in the, in the context of uh i can't remember her name i i told you i suck at names you know bianca belair Jesus oh, okay Christmas. yes I am uh, horrible at this. Yeah. Bianca Belair. Who won the Women's Battle Royale. Yeah, the Women's Battle Royale on NXT this past yeah, Again, uh, another yeah. holy shit type of moment. Yes, it was. It was really a holy shit type of moment. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter who her opponent is because she's still got the shot regardless uh, when it yeah. comes to Portland. Yeah. Um, so that's up in the air. Um, well, please just let it be Rhea. Yeah, I think I think Bianca Belair versus Rhea is a as a slightly more interesting match down the line than Bianca Belair versus Tony Storm because she, Tony Storm still has a lot of stuff to do in NXT UK. She still got a little bit of a feud with Kaylee Ray, who's on the pre-show against me again. We didn't bring it up yeah. because it's a pre-show, uh, but Kaylee Ray is going to be on the pre-show uh, against me again. She still got that, and with Piper Niven, it's like yeah. she still got that little program going. Yeah, but because she's got her dance card full adding bianca belair to that might be a, a little bit too much it to might chew. be it might be and that is a bit much so i got rhea ripley holding on to the title for this one okay, because yeah. i really want to see rhea ripley versus bianca belair that is going to be amazing just one-on-one -on -one. we've seen glimpses yeah. of it like with the women's war games yeah i really want to see this match and then we finally have the main event of the night which which I event. part of me kind of wished this would have ended up in a war games, but the other part of me is like I I I'd rather these people like you know by the time war games comes around in twenty twenty, they be like you know elsewhere like on the main roster tearing it up. Probably so I, I would rather that happen. Uh, but we have Imperium Walter Fabian Eichner, Marcel Bartel, and Alexander Wolf versus the Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Roderick Strong, and why does Undisputed Era have four? They oh, are. okay, all but okay. Get it. it confused me. And you missed your cue. I was trying to get you to do the Adam Cole baby, and you just missed your cue. I did Adam Cole baby. Wow, there you go. wow, professional. I love it. I know, right? I love it. And again, like the story. Put that in air quotes. The story for this is like completely contained into Worlds Collide. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing for this. Um, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2 ends with Walter retaining over Joe Coffey. Yes. And then Undisputed Era just like invades. This is why, this is why you never turn off a TakeOver until after the credits Please roll wait till after and the credits. everything fades to black. Yes. Because the credits popped up. <laughs> everything and fades to black. Like Alistair Black, everything fades to black. See the joke? That was the joke there. That was, good. that was a good joke. I think they think it was a good joke. And Undisputed Era sneaks in and beats the crap out of everybody. And that sparks this nice little, nice little back and forth oh, yeah, between these, these two teams. Uh, and like, they're, these styles are completely different. The oh, yeah. styles are completely different yeah. between these two teams uh, in this Undisputed Era and Imperium. Imperium is your very traditional Matt General, you know, 
Like, they just want to strike hard, beat you down. Yeah, they got, you know, Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner as, like, some semi-high flyers. But, like, basically, everything is very traditional, very, very respect the ring kind of style. Yeah. And then you have the Undisputed Era, who are a bunch of opportunists and, like, a pack of freaking wolves at times. The way that they just, like, are a buzzsaw whenever they manage to lock on to one particular body part or one particular member of a team. And, like, the chemistry between these two teams should be freaking amazing. Yeah. Imperium versus the Undisputed Era. God dog it. Ah! Again. Because <laughs> you're making me choose. Yeah, I'm making you go first. Ah! Oh, you gotta choose. I'm probably gonna be wrong. I hate to say this, but I'm sticking with the undisputed error. Error? Yeah. Error. Era. Error. That's not funny. But you got the undisputed era. Yeah. I got Imperium. I got Imperium mainly because Undisputed Era can take the loss. Yeah, they can. They could take the loss. Imperium could take the loss too, because like as long as you're not pinning Valter, you're good. And I no, I don't think anybody's gonna pin Valter, so But I, I, I need to see Imperium just beat the crap. And plus I think for a lot of these picks that we have, we've basically been picking like, you know, NXT versus over NXT UK on a lot. What are you doing? I'm trying to get out of here. It's a tab. I know. Close I was trying the to find tab. It. That's what I was doing. Finish speaking. Just clicking all clickety click 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 and shit. Jesus. Where was I? Just 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 confuse me there for a second. We picked I think we picked mostly NXT members for for the winners in a lot of these matches. Uh this will be a big win for NXT UK. Imperium taking this and just like running roughshod over the rest of the company would be perfect especially if any of these members are going to be involved in the Royal Rumble weekend because we don't we don't have a full roster of who's going to all be involved in the Royal Rumble. We have hopefully some surprises. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I got Imperium for this one. And speaking of the Royal Rumble, let's let's hop right into that. That was Worlds Collide. Worlds Collide is done. Yeah, that was NXT Worlds done. Collide. We're done with now Worlds Collide. Now we're going to Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble, which this card is a surprise to me because there is a lot of thriller and only one filler. And we know which one's the filler. And we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. And I do have also some some slight issues with uh with the way the WWE was handling one slight thing, but I'll get into my little rant at the end. But for right now, let's jump right into this. We have the the start of the Royal Rumble which is our singles match for the United States Championship, Humberto Carrillo versus the champion Andrade. Andrade takes the championship away from Rey Mysterio, not on TV. He does it on a live event at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. That was was a surprise to me. I did not expect that to happen. But uh, it makes sense because now everybody is like, hey, you know, go to a WWE live event. There might be a title that changes hand. They did the same thing with um, uh, Samoa Joe in uh, Lowell, Massachusetts, when he took the uh, NXT championship from from Finn, from uh, Finn Balor, right? I think it was Kevin Owens or Finn. It might have been Finn Balor. Okay, okay. but like he took the championship away, and it was just it was a live event. It wasn't an actual you know event event. Yeah, it wasn't an actual taped event. It was uh, again a very surprising thing. So. <laughs> All the, whenever they, they they have these hey it's a live event things can happen uh, sort of incidents it's a great thing I love it incredible Humberto Carrillo is coming into his own uh, just coming up from being you know a member of Two Hundred Five Live part of the Cruiserweights to just being a shiny dimple face smiling yay I'm a baby face uh, guy to actually you know doing stuff on the main roster yeah. and here he has a shot at the United States Championship. Um, who do you have on this one? Ugh. I don't know. Because, I mean, Andrade and Selena. There Jesus. You go. We have that wild card. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I, I'm going to have to say Andrade only because of Selena and I know what's going to happen mm-hmm. because it's Andrade. So <coughs> yeah. 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 I got Andrade on this one, uh, because you have that wild card, Selena Vega, uh, Humberto Carrillo. This is uh first real one-on-one championship can, uh, you know, chance that, that shot for him. Yeah. Um, He's great in the ring. He's amazing in the ring, a high flyer. Um, But also, you know, he is kind of an escape artist uh, and does some pretty decent character work. Um, You feel he probably still has more to grow? He's he's got a lot more to grow. Okay. Uh, Okay. He's still amazing to watch on the screen. I loved uh, seeing him the first time around uh, when I saw him show up on NXT. Uh, One time I was like, oh, hey, there's this new guy. And every time I see a new guy, I'm happy to see, you know, a new face on the screen. And uh, this guy just shows up, does a few high flying moves, loses his match. But I'm like, I want to see more of him. And I'm glad with his development so far. But uh, I think you may have like a few more months down the line before you see him with gold around his waist. But you should see him with gold around his waist. I think he's going to do an amazing job uh, in his spot. Uh, But I got Andrade on this one. You got to have him hold on to the title a lot more. He does a much... Like, in terms of mid-card titles, the U.S. title somehow has supplanted the IC title because it's being defended. People are having storylines surrounding it, whereas the IC title ain't doing shit. And I'm disappointed in that. And I kind of want to talk about that, but I'll do that later because we have the next up, the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, Lacey Evans versus Bailey. Now, the story for this is kind of... It's, it's kind of... Eh, but... I am kind of excited for this match because Lacey Evans has come into her own yeah. over the past few months. Yeah. Uh, it started off uh, with Lacey going for the Raw Women's Championship uh, way back when she was a massive heel. And I did not think that she was in a prime position to do so because nobody really cared. Yeah. Nobody really cared. She didn't have much of a character. I don't think they really care with this one either. I, I, I think they care more. They care a lot more. Maybe than they just used a little to. bit. Than they, than they, used, uh, than they did uh, in her first uh, championship attempt. But like when she was going up against uh, Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship, nobody really gave a shit. Uh, you know, they wanted other people to go uh, be in this spot and they kind of propelled her up to the top to be in the lead for a lot of these storylines and they all sort of fell flat. Yeah. Uh, and this particular one, the fans seem to be a little bit more into her. Uh, she's a bit more of a face, but it's more of that jingoistic, ultra patriotic, you know, I am a Marine kind of yeah. kind of pro-America yeah. face. Uh, but it works for her uh, and it works for a few of the fans. Um, and in this particular instance, she is much better in the ring than she was uh, during that first attempt at uh, a championship. And here we have Bailey who on the other end is just kind of there in her heel phase. Like she changed her hair. She changed her gear. She changed her music. And like, it doesn't feel like she's comfortable in this role. Um, yeah, that's fair to say. And I, I'm going to have to say I, I agree, although I do like her as a heel. I like her as a heel, but, but like it doesn't yeah. feel like she's comfortable. And like it makes it harder for me to enjoy it. Yeah. Because like, like just try to think about some of the heel things that she's done. And it's like the same sort of cliche, uh, it, you know, it is. you know, it you guys, I, I'm the best. You guys suck kind of thing and it's and, like, and that's being more pushed by Sasha than Bailey. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. It, it, Sasha this is more is of a, a really, Sasha run than yeah, it is a Bailey. Cuz Sasha is a really really good heel and a really really good face. Yeah. So. so, and Sasha embraces all roles that she plays. Yeah. Bailey has just always been a that face. That baby face right. and it just it just doesn't feel comfortable. But we have Bailey versus Lacey Evans for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Who do you have on this one? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Bailey retains. Uh, I might be wrong, but I don't. I just... I, I got Bailey retaining. Um, I don't see them dropping the title that quickly. Um, and there's really nothing more after this. Yeah. Because, like, there's not a lot of story to this. And, again, I'm going to talk about that later. But there's not a lot to this feud between these two 
you know, there's not a lot on the horizon in the women's division and SmackDown women's division For when it comes down to the championship yeah. in total. So, like, it, if Lacey Evans takes it, it's still going to be the Lacey Evans Bailey show. Yeah. And th- there's no reason to, to bounce the that. title back and yeah. forth between these two. Yeah. So, I got Bailey on this one. Uh, next up, we have Shorty G. I hate that fucking name. Chad Gable. Thank Why? You. I hate that name. Chad Gable versus Sheamus. Sheamus is coming back. And he looks freaking amazing. Yeah, he does. He looks great. Uh, it's still the same I'm big, you're small kind of story yeah, that's going it is. on. It is. But it works because Seamus is legitimately big. Chad Gable is legitimately kind of short. And it's not like it's not like the revival going like, hey, you're Shorty G. Motherfucker, y'all are like the same height. How you gonna call him Shorty G when you're the same height? Okay. And like Chad Gable ain't even that short. He's like 5'11. That's not short. I don't get I don't get the naming convention. I don't get the story of calling him short. I don't get it. I don't get it. It sucks. It's horrible, but this match should be great. I like a lot of a lot of the main a lot of the main roster shit for 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 WWE is I hate this story, but I love the characters in it and the match should be good. And this is one of those. This story sucks. It makes no sense. Calling him Shorty G, he's like 5'10", 5'11". That's not short at all. That's not... Sh- I want to double check. Hold on one second. Yes, I'm doing this. I'm doing this right now. I don't okay. give a shit. Okay. I'm mad. Okay, 5'8". Still not that short. Okay, my point no longer stands because five eight is kind of on the short. Still, I'm I'm sticking by. It. He ain't that short. He ain't Rey Mysterio. Okay. Anyway, who, whatever. Well, well since who, who that brand, who do you have? I, got I think you should just go ahead and start that one. <laughs> I hate this story. I hate this fucking story. This is stupid. Um, I got Sheamus. Yeah, no. I got Seamus. I, I'm gonna agree. Okay. I got to uh, that, and he's just now coming back. He's coming back. Yeah, I, I don't see why they would have him lose. Like, although I I hate it because like Chad Gable yeah. is like freaking I love badass. Him. I love. Him. But, I hate Shorty G. I love Chad Gable. Okay, but you can't change the man's. Name. They changed his name. Okay, but you can't change the young man's name. Okay? I'm changing his name. You Chad, you're back to Chad Gable. Your mama calls you Gable. I'm calling you Gable. Moving on. Balls count anywhere match. Balls count anywhere match. Actually, this one. This I really is the don't match give that we shit. don't give a shit about. Roman Reigns. Dog food. Dog fursuits. I already said who's going to win. We're going to move on. Shitty ass shit shit. I hate this. Actually, no, I take that back. It's probably going to be King Corbin. Uh, it's bullshit. It's Roman Reigns because he's got to go to the Royal Rumble. He's going to be in the Royal Rumble match. It's going to be Roman Reigns. Oh, right. And that wouldn't make sense for... Isn't like, Corbin in the Royal Rumble I don't... Too? I think he is, but like... This doesn't make sense! Why is this a match? Y'all could have fucking saved this for like fast lane. Or no, just don't do the shit at all! Y'all could have just saved it for fucking fast lane or, or elimination chamber or anything. Save, 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 it for, save it for a WWE special on WWE Network.com, but... Why? Why? Why is this taking up space when we could have had an intercontinental title match, or a tag team match, or or something? So you can't blame the IC Championship on I can, anybody. I can I can blame it on them for 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 like making nobody put, take interest. They, yeah. How are you gonna change the IC title and make it look as clean like that? That title look clean. That title look clean yes. as hell. I like that title. I like the old one. It's a little bit better, but that title look clean as hell. It's a new generation, and you don't do shit with it. You don't do shit with it. No. You haven't done shit. There's not been like another IC title match. I haven't seen that new clean ass title on my TV screen. If it is, it's glimpses of like Shinsuke Nakamura coming down with it, having it around his waist, and then handing it off to just to lose in the match with with uh, Braun Strowman. Yeah. Yay. That, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you got a new title and you don't do shit with it. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Move, move, move the fuck yeah, off on this shit. Uh, we got the Raw Women's Championship match. We have Asuka versus Becky Lynch. Now, this one. This is going to be fun. 
This is going to be fun. I need to see an Oscar redemption. I need to see an Oscar yeah, redemption. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Yeah, I love it Becky holding that tie. It but, might not. But I need to see an Oscar redemption. Yeah. Uh. So with this one, what I would say, because you know, Becky Lynch and Oscar have been coming up with this phenomenal storyline. Yeah, they've been of course, sniping back and oh, forth yeah. at each other. Yeah. Oscar's been like spinning the green, green. mist in her face. Yeah. Yo, that promo that Becky Lynch dropped after Oscar spat that mist in her face because like they, she was dropping F-bombs oh, yeah, yeah, on, yeah. That, on yeah. that shit right there. Yeah. That was good. I love that. Like go back like a couple weeks. I think it was a few weeks uh, on Raw. No, I think it was just a couple weeks. I don't think it was... It, it, it was like within the past two, three weeks. Yeah. Within the past two, okay. three weeks yeah. on Raw when Asuka spat in her face and like they're trying to help her to the back and she's just cussing up a storm. It's yeah. like, I'm about to whoop your ass. Yeah. And I'm That's putting the title amazing. on the line. I loved it. I loved it. That, that was great. Um, these two have some great chemistry. I, I, this match is going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, I hope that there's no uh, major shenanigans. You know Kyrie Sane is going to be on, on the ringside. Yeah, there's going to be yeah. some shenanigans. I'm pretty sure Charlotte Flair is going to come out there to try Last to even minute, the probably. odds yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, but this match should be great. Hopefully, again, not too many shenanigans. Uh, but Becky Lynch versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship. Who do you have? I want Asuka to win it. She deserves it. She does. But she I know that's does. not gonna happen. Why is this, why is it not gonna happen, D? Because they don't love us. They don't love us. So They're I have definitely. to they say Becky us. retains. So you got Becky retaining. Um, this is gonna be my bold pick of the night. This is my bold pick of the night. I got Asuka. I don't think any titles are gonna change hands on this main roster card. I don't I, think any I, titles are gonna so change either. hands whatsoever. So um but I got Asuka. I got Asuka on this one. I would not be surprised if she won. If, if there was a title that changed hands, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Asuka. Yeah, um, yeah. Moving on, we have the Universal Championship strap match. Oh my freaking They bring God. out the strap on this one. Everybody tied together with a strap. We're and really glad up. that you're our friend. And this is a friendship that would never, ever end. Sorry, I had to. That's like sucking your head. Yeah, it kind of does get there. The Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. Now, this was this is great. Of of all of the stories on this one, this one I love. It's if it was anybody else, this would be cheesy and hokey and horrible. But this yeah, is perfect. It's perfect for the right people, and this yeah. is the right people because Daniel Bryan, he's like I'm. I'm giving into this. I, yeah. I am into this. I, yeah. I I believe 100 in this, and I love this. Yeah. So Daniel Bryan has a Universal Championship match, and he loses. Nice match, good match, short match, but yeah. he loses. Puts right. up a good fight against the Fiend. He comes back. Miz wants him to, you know, figure something out. He he wants him to 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 go up against the Fiend one more time mm -hmm. because like it changes you. You know, you got to do something. You got to come up with something. Yeah. Because like if you don't, you need to do it for us. You need to do it for us. People in the backstage, people who have families. You know, you got a family, and. He's kind of balking on it, but the fiend, the fiend keeps testing him. He keeps trying to make him go, yes, give in to being the yes man again. Yeah. Going for those yes chants yeah. one more time. Yeah. And the it very does. second that he does, the very second that he gives in to it, the very second that he gives in to the fans, the fiend shows up, yanks him to parts unknown, and rips out all his hair, his all beard, his hair, yeah. everything. Yeah. And he's gone off the TV for a while. Yeah. He comes back looking like the American dragon Brian Danielson, clean cut and everything. Mm -hmm. And he ain't afraid of no fiend. Nope. He's dropping knees on the fiend. Yeah. He's making the fiend run away. Yeah. And he's showing like, yo, I got this. Let's do this one more run. Yeah. One more again. One more again. One more again. And they're ready to go. They the are ready title. to just roll. And he's afraid. He's like, I'm getting tired of you running away. Let's do a strap match. We tied together. Strap to strap. Ain't no running I, away. Right. And I have to say, because last night was the contract signing. Oh, yeah. The contract signing. And the contract Let's signing. Let's get into that contract signing. And the contract signing. signing. Now, contract signings usually never go well in the WWE. Nope. People go through tables. People get beat up. People get ambushed. Yeah. Whatever happens. This one should go into history books. This one, this one was... This one was actually pretty nice. I like this. I like yeah. this. Yeah. So Bray Wyatt is on the only little Titan Tron. Yeah. Up He's in the Trident. family fun house. The family fun. Uh, right there. The Trident. Family right, fun right, house. Right there. Right there. Yes. Right there. Up there. And he's like, yo, 
though since you're not facing me, me you're facing the, the fiend, fiend should be down there to sign that contract yeah fiend shows up out of nowhere of course he beats up daniel bryan yeah, that's, that's nothing new that's nothing he beat new. the hell out of him with the strap i mean that's nothing new it's nothing new he's no but he beat him I mean, like he did beat him okay you know how you get your ass whooped when you're a child and you know, your parent comes and whoops the shit out you it's with like, the bell what i say yeah about what move your hand move move your hand that's what, what the fiend did to daniel bryan he beat him like a government mule yes he did then, At the end, yeah, he's like, I'm gonna sign this contract, but I'm gonna sign it in the most fiend of a way. I'm gonna stab my own hand with the pen, pencil. Doesn't matter. Okay. With the with the writing implement. He stabbed his hand. Yes. And he dug it in there. Yeah, he did. And then he smeared blood across the contract. Yep. As his way of signing it. And then walked out the ring. Like and then walked happened. out like nothing happened. Now that was some imagery. Hokey as shit, but I loved it. It works for these two. That is some scary. That's some issues right there. I mean, there. Your, your child was like, you know, up under your skirt. Like, hell no, I don't want to see this. No yeah, more. no, he was not too thrilled. He was with not that. having it. He was not too. He thrilled was not about having that. it at all. But that was good. I I love the way these these two work together because again, if it was anybody else, if it was anybody else, this would not work. And so far, Daniel Bryan is the only one who has not been negatively changed. By the fiend, Seth Rollins been changed. Finn Balor's been changed. Yep. The Miz has been changed. Daniel Bryan has only grown much more intense in the way that he's been like, yeah. "Yo, I still need this." Yeah, and I love that. I love the way that they've been telling that story. But let's go into this. Who do you have for the Universal Championship match? It's a strap match. Who you got? Oh God, this is gonna be a tough. Since nobody's exchanging hands, I'm gonna say the fiend retains. Now, do we have the red lights again? Please say no. I don't want those red lights. Yeah, can we get just... rid of the freaking red lights? I got the fiend. I got the fiend yeah. because I mean, come on, not not at Royal Rumble. Maybe at <laughs> no. WrestleMania. Yeah, WrestleMania. Maybe at WrestleMania. Yes. Royal Rumble, no. But not at Royal Rumble. No, 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 not no. at Royal Rumble. No. Though it would be interesting to see if there is going to be a fiend uh elimination chamber for the WWE Universal Championship. Ooh. I would be interested in that. I would be interested to see how they work that out. Mm. I want to know how they do that. Mm -hmm. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. But those that is it for every non-Royal Rumble match. Yeah. Now, here's my little mini rant. WWE loves to tout the women's revolution. Yeah, and for the most part, a lot of the stuff that they've done for the women's revolution has been great. We've had some great matches. Uh, the four horsewomen, perfect. Love it. Uh, they bring in some MMA girls and a lot, a lot of the stuff that's been centered around them. Perfect. Great. I love it. There has been absolutely no build to the women's Royal Rumble. Not a single iota of build. Let's also not, not mention... Not a scintilla of build. Not... Let's all also mention that when do we get a, a women's pay-per-view back? Yeah, I wonder when... when uh, They uh, did it one time, and I think it's been like two years ago? Yeah, it was about two years ago. What the shit And it was only in response to the that? fact that, that, that no women were allowed to come to Saudi Arabia and perform. Like, I want that back. Bring Evolution back. Yes. But there's been no build for the Women's Royal Rumble no. whatsoever. It's it's going to happen. It's going to be great. It's probably going to surprise the hell out of us who's yeah, going to win. it is. But, like, there's been no build. There's been no, no. no hype around it nope. whatsoever. It's just And immense. that has been disappointing as hell. Very. And, like, they should be, they should be disappointed in themselves. I'd be just, I'd be disappointed in myself. I'm pretty sure the no Women's build. roster is, like, disappointed. A little, I would be, too. I would be too. But here's how we're going to do this Royal Rumble. We're going to pick our top five. I don't know. If, okay. We're going to pick top five women that we think are going to win this. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. What are you doing? I don't know my top five. You don't need... Uh, you can pick people from NXT, NXT UK, WWE, people who've been well, out. I still want to look up who is potential? Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
you, that's they not don't it. have a list of they're not going to show you a list of people who are why you just, you, that's just you, you're going to have to guess because nobody again there's been no build so nobody's been like I'm in the rumble okay like that's not ha- that's not been happening that's that is confusing point. as hell so you're just going to have to come up with five women that you think are going to be in the rumble that you <sighs> believe are going to win oh my God. that's what that's all I'm going to do that's literally all I'm going to do then you go I'm going to go yeah okay go. okay I think Naomi's coming back. So, I got Naomi. Ember Moon is out for a while, or otherwise she would be my next pick. Shayna Baszler. That's my, long, that's my long shot. That's my big long shot. Because Shayna Baszler has done everything that she could in, in NXT. It only makes sense for her to pop up, especially considering the fact that Ronda Rousey is still free and clear. Who knows how that works. I've got Charlotte Flair. She has a potential to, to win that. Same for Sasha Banks, uh, Sasha, Sasha Banks. And frick it, Nia Jax. Okay. Those are my five. Okay. Those are my five. I have Naomi. I have Shayna. I have Charlotte. Kyrie. Ay, Jesus. I'm going to say Piper Nevin. Ooh. Okay. Because, like, we don't know who's all participating. The whole yeah. point of the Rumble is about being surprised. You got surprise entrance. You got people hopping in out of nowhere. And you you also, this is fantasy booking right now okay. at this point. All right. So, those are your five. Here, those are my five. Yeah. Moving on to the Men's Royal Rumble. <clears throat> it's the same thing. Top five who you believe are going to win. You want me to go? Yeah, okay, just, I'll go. just I'll go. go. I'll go. This just, just go. I'll go. So Brock Lesnar, because oh there's, there's been a lot more bill for this. Brock Lesnar is going in as number one. Oh, God. Which, I hate that. I hate this so much mm-hmm. because you have a title. And the last time somebody had the title and they had to go into the Rumble was Roman Reigns and they had to put that title on the line. Yeah. There is absolutely no risk for you to hop into the Rumble there's as no number reason. one. And there's no rhyme or reason whatsoever. <laughs> there's no reason, but you're picking him as one of your picks? No, God, no. Okay. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just preempting all of that to give a little bit of story of background to the Men's Royal Rumble. Okay. Brock Lesnar, this is dumb. This is dumb. This is very How dumb. come we're not making him put his title on the line? If, if, if it's, if it's a spoiler, if it's a spoiler, see, this, this is one of those moments where having an authority figure of some sort kind of works on TV. Having having a William Regal uh, or something along those lines would work for this. Cause, but like, hey, guess what? We don't have a GM, so guess what? We don't what? have a GM. We don't have anybody like that because, like, like somebody should force him to put that title on the line. I did. If, if I was a GM, gonna, I would. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna be talking all this bullshit about it's a spoiler, it's it's a it's a guarantee and all this shit, you're going in as number one. He's gonna win uh, uh, the Royal Rumble and bullshit. Make him put the title on the line. Yeah. Ma- ma- make him put the title on the line so that the winner wins the championship. Yeah. Just like they did with with uh, Roman Reigns. With everybody, not just Roman Reigns, everybody. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, Roman Reigns had the title, he had to put it on the like line. Brock for freaking, Brock but freaking gets to take it, his it makes balls, no sense to me. shove it up everybody's ass, and everybody's like, oh, that's fine. What? Whatever, just... <laughs> wow, okay, that was a thing that you said. But with that being said, my top five, uh, I got Braun Strowman. My longest of shots, John Cena. I know. I know, right? Um, Drew McIntyre. Seth Rollins. And my not as long of a shot, because I know he's going to be at least participating, but still kind of a long shot, Ricochet. Those are mine. Okay. Ricochet. Seth Rollins. Braun Strowman. Our truth. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. Yeah. The way that you paused on it, like even you knew. Yeah. Even you knew. You're like, Ricochet, Braun Strowman, Seth Rollins, our truth. Let me pause. Let me let that sit and simmer for a bit. Yep. I want y'all to hear. I want y'all to know that I said our truth. I said our truth, and Cedric Alexander. Ooh, Ceddy. All right, all right, cool. I'm cool with that. 
this this whole weekend should be great. Like, uh, there's only one match that I know for a fact that I don't give a shit about. Everything else should be either a good, amazing continuation of a story, a creation of a story, or if it has no story to it whatsoever, it'll at least be a good match. So this whole weekend should be great. But then again, I've been unpleasantly surprised by WWE before because they've had, you know, the, des- the desire to pull shenanigans. Yeah, so they do. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, I'm going to walk us out on this one. Oh, you, you want me to do it? it? I got this. I got All this. right, I go for this. it. I got this straight up. I got this. Mm-mm. <laughs> That's our show. And as always, you can catch our podcast on iTunes. Link in the, stri- uh, link in the description below. Or at the website at hillcatcher.com, the newly de- redesigned website. Yay, yay. There you can find our shows, articles, and our merchandise to keep the site up and running to keep us providing you with content. Speaking of merchandise, we are wearing our shit. She got that straight villainy on. I got that kaiju gang on. You can catch that at hillkaiju.com slash shop. You can also join the Kaiju Wrecking Crew by following us on our Twitter account at hillkaiju, where we'll provide you with any updates, developments, and insights. Thank you again for listening. Thank you again for watching. And remember to keep smashing. Deuces. Bye.